Let's get to the question of why do these curves disagree? These are both volume curves. One is hypertrophy, one is strength. And man, high volumes are just so good for, for hypertrophy, clearly. And high volumes are just so bad for strength, clearly. Why, how is that possible? Looking at the, the visual here, this will kind of helpful to, to think about as I kind of describe this. We observe a positive dose response relationship between weekly training volume and changes in muscle size, and that continues through high volumes. So a positive dose response relationship, even around 10 sets here, continues to trend upwards, right? The second one is we do not observe a positive dose response relationship between a weekly training volume and changes in strength at high volumes. So they're getting at the point that things quote unquote plateau at this point right around here, around 10 sets or so, things peter out, there's no additional gains to be had, is the claim. Three, changes in muscle size that are due to increasing contractile protein content. So think the things like myosin, actin, the actual components of muscle that contract and produce force, those correlate strongly with changes in strength or strength capacity. So if you are gaining muscle from contractile proteins, you're also going to be gaining strength. Those things trend together. Four, we do not observe a strong correlation between changes in muscle size and strength capacity at high volume. So that's what this red area is indicating. It's a, the correlation is decreasing because strength is flattening out while hypertrophy is still trending upwards. So the conclusion is, thus, those changes in muscle size at high volumes right here, or this area in the red, must be due to factors other than increasing the contractile protein content. And so there's multiple hypotheses that are out there. Um, you'll touch on those in a second, but that's kind of the general idea.